Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Black people continue to be erased from our contributions to some of the most innovative and essential inventions throughout history. For instance, the most well-known whiskey brand in the world is Jack Daniels. But until recently, most people did not even know of the Jack Daniels whiskey brand and where it originated from. There's a lot of controversy surrounding Jack Daniels whiskey. So let's take a look at some of the darker aspects, no pun intended, of the famous Tennessee brand. Welcome to Lovely TTV. And before we uncover the harsh truth behind Jack Daniels, don't forget to thumbs up the video and make sure you subscribe down below. The story of Jack Daniels begins in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Most people believe that a man named Jack Daniels invented the famous whiskey. Despite being credited with founding the company, he was not the one who produced the recipe. The credit goes to a man named Nathan Nearest Green. The people who owned Green used to lease him out to do work all around the county. And one day, Green was leased out to a pastor named Dan Call. Now, Green was infamous for making a really nice whiskey. And with this whiskey, he used a sugar maple charcoal filtering method. And the origins of that method came from West Africa. Green had a reputation for being a skilled distiller, and he produced a lot of whiskey for Pastor Dan Call. A young boy named Jack Daniels also began working for Dan Call as well. So he started assisting the pastor in more and more chores, like milking the cow, feeding the pigs, fetching water, and other tasks associated with running a farm. So as he's working, him and Nearest, um, the slave, they got very close. And so they have formed a really close bond. They would talk all the time. And soon he asked if he could be Nearest's apprentice. And he wanted Nearest to basically teach him, you know, the secret method to the whiskey that he was making because he was very interested in this. And so the pastor agreed to let Nearest basically take Jack Daniels on as a young apprentice so that way they could make more whiskey together. So even though Nearest was a slave and Jack Daniels was a young boy, he decided to go on ahead and mentor him. But let's keep it real. He really had no choice in the matter. He had to mentor the young boy. So what ended up happening is that basically um, Jack Daniels asked Nearest to show him everything he knew about distilling, particularly the method of sugar maple charcoal filtering. The young boy continued to learn as much as he could from Nearest until he was old enough to start promoting this really distinctive whiskey in other communities close to Lynchburg. His whiskey quickly rose to the top of the local markets. And around that time, Jack Daniels also lost his father to the Civil War. So he ended up basically moving on to the farm. Um, and he was living with Pastor Carl and also living with Nearest. So what ended up happening is that as the liquor was taking off, the young man was able to become more self-sufficient. So then at that time, him and the preacher decided to partner and start selling this type of whiskey after the Civil War. So the whiskey just took off. Like a lot of people loved it and Nearus continued to help them. Now the good thing is this owner, um, he was a pastor, so he was able to make enough money to basically buy Nearus from his slave masters and so he bought them and Nearus ended up living there full time because he was really helping them with the distillery. And so they were also paying theirs, which was also very rare because most slaves did not get paid anything back then. So as Pastor Carl got older, um, Jack Daniels asked to basically buy his shares of the company because he could no longer really help run it. So the pastor agreed and Jack Daniel ended up being the full owner of the company. Soon after that, he changed the whiskey name to Jack Daniels, which was named after himself. And on top of that, he also asked Nearis to serve as his first master distiller. Distiller. So Nearest worked for the company for years, being the master distiller. And when people began finding out the story of Nathan Green, a.k.a. Nearest, they really did not want to believe that he could be the one responsible for creating the Jack Daniels whiskey brand, and mainly because he was black. People just assumed that black people would not have that type of knowledge to create something so good. So if people back then, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, post-Civil War, didn't want to believe that a black man could be behind this whiskey brand, a lot of people to this day are not aware of Nearest's 
Jackson's contribution to Jack Daniels. So what was so interesting is that an article was posted by the New York Times back in 2016. And um, one of the great, great granddaughters of Green was asked about this. And she says, we've always known that he made whiskey and he taught Jack Daniels and people did not believe it. It was extremely hurtful to the family. Now, however, the current owner of the Jack Daniels whiskey brand in Tennessee, they have not acknowledged the pivotal role that Green played in the growth of the brand, which has contributed significantly to people starting to believe it. According to Matt Belvins, a global band director for Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, Nerys Green was the first head distiller of Jack Daniels Whiskey. And they are committed to amplifying it and acknowledging that. Now, I don't really think that justice has been had in this situation. After all, Nares Green taught Jack Daniels the skills to make this particular whiskey. And Jack Daniels' family became very wealthy due to this. And really, all Nares Green got was a job. So while Jack Daniels' family was able to create generational wealth that they're still enjoying to this day... Nares Green's family did not enjoy that same generational wealth. Now, granted, Jack Daniels did pay him, which was a blessing because, like I said, most people did not pay their slaves. And the one good thing about this is that is that Nares Green made so much money by being a master distiller that he was able to buy his freedom. So he was able to buy himself out of slavery, and he also became one of the wealthiest African-American men in Lynchburg, Tennessee, immediately following the end of slavery. His wealth exceeded that of many of his white counterparts, which was incredibly rare in that day and age. So he was able to benefit for himself and his immediate family. They were able to get out of bondage. They were able to take care of themselves. But that money was not able to be trickled down because, again, there were no contracts. He was not a part of that brand he just worked for them it was a job you cannot take a job and pass that down to your children you can only pass down a brand a company things like that so while his wealth died with him and his immediate family jack daniel's family they've been able to eat and sustain themselves from this generational wealth building so that is the difference between owning something and having a job. A job cannot be passed down. So there's been a lot of plans in place to honor Nathan Nearest Green. One of those plans include a street renaming, a museum, a memorial park, a book, and a scholarship fund. A New York Times bestseller, Fawn Weaver, has created the Nearest Green Foundation, and that is an organization that will honor the man who taught Jack Daniels how to make his whiskey. The Nearest Green Legacy Scholarship is now being offered to descendants of Nearest Green green they are committed to paying the full tuition of his ancestors now even though jack daniels isn't going to go back and cut the green family a check um, for their fair share of the profits from their ancestors talent jack daniels willingness to acknowledge and incorporate green story is a good thing it's something that should be happening but it goes to show you how black people have helped to make some of these household brands what they are today and the sad thing is, unlike Nathan Green, they will never get their acknowledgement or see any fruits from their labor, let alone access to generational wealth created by these brands. So again, this is why it's very important to understand the past and the things that people have contributed. So that is the story of Nathan Ernest Green, the real talent behind the Jack Daniels brand. So I leave the question up to you guys. What do you guys think about this? Are you surprised to learn about this? Did you guys know anything about Nairis Green? Did you know that it was a black man who was distilling and helped played a pivotal role in the Jack Daniels brand? So let me know what you guys think about this story. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys like the video. Don't forget to hit that bell. And most importantly, make sure you still subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.